and I'm at Super AI Singapore 2025 here. And uh, with me today, I'm very pleased and very privileged to have Niels, who is with Aoki Labs. Have that's I right. pronounced it right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, all the way from uh, Hong Kong, right? Yeah, from Hong Kong. Right, uh, to share with us the latest on uh, decentralized visual positioning. Mm. Right. So when it comes to visual positioning, I think a lot of our audience would think immediately one example, right, is Google Maps, right? I mean, mm. like we put in our location, current location, where we want to go to, and then it will plot the route for us. But of course, there's a lot of privacy concerns when using that, and that's one of the challenges that you are looking to solve. Yeah, so uh, most of the time when we use Google Maps, uh, it uses the GPS, actually. So uh, gets its rough position from positioning satellites. Visual positioning uh, you can use in Google Maps when you turn on the augmented reality mode. Uh, have you ever tried it? The, the, uh, so there's an AR mode that you can use in some cities uh, to help you, you look around in AR and see where am I supposed to go next. Visual positioning is when you take the camera feed and you compare what the camera is seeing to a model of the world to let an AI figure out, oh, based on what you're looking at, I think I can guess where you are. This is visual positioning. The problem with visual positioning is, of course, you're sharing what you're looking at with someone that will know where you are, right? Uh, and this can be particularly dangerous in a world where we wear AR glasses, for example, because then the visual positioning provider would be able to know what are we looking at at all times. Yep. Uh, because the glasses actually need the visual positioning to know where they are. AR glasses don't work without visual positioning. So you have to be very careful when using AR glasses because you are, uh, you are showing, the wor you're showing the provider uh, what it is you're looking at, which is very sensitive data for many people. But also, the, uh, like visual positioning is mainly in public spaces now. Because in private spaces, a lot of private spaces don't actually want to share the data of, of what it looks like. So uh, our most recent customer, our first multi-million dollar deal, is a big retailer. And how they place the products on the shelf is one of their best kept secrets, like highest classified information. So of course, they don't want to give that data to Google or something like this. So a big part of our value proposition is that we allow them to run a visual positioning system on their own machines without giving the data to us. So the, the clients would have the hardware, right? And you provide the software layer, yeah. the solution, the algorithms to map. The I hardware guess. is really just the phones they have in their pocket already. Uh, we can use the phones that are in their pocket already. We also support uh, a growing number of robots and glasses, but it works just fine with the phones in your pocket. And what we help them do is typically use their phone to create uh, a digital twin and a visual positioning system for these private venues uh, so that they can have different kinds of applications on top of this. So our most popular application for the retailers now is the ability for the retailer uh, to use uh, spatial computing to create a map of where are the products actually in the store. Where are they actually? Not according to some plan that headquarters wrote, but what does it really look like in the store? Where are the popcorn actually? And then they tie that to their sales data. And for the first time, they can see heat maps of what part of the shelf is generating the sales. Not what product category or something like this, but what part of my store is generating revenue. So is it more like um, correlating what the, uh, the users is looking at to, um, to a database or where they think the products are? So they don't have a database today of where they think the products are. Right. Uh, some, some retailers have, but it's very difficult for them to actually keep the store in that state. Uh, the reason you want to know where the products are is so that you can do analytics on is this product placement good or bad, right? Um, every retailer has a finite resource, which is their shelf space, and they want to know, am I using my shelf space in a good way? And you can't measure that unless you know where are the products. So for example, I, I use my phone, I go around, I'm one of the employees of the store, I go around the store, take a video of the products uh, in the store, and that is sent to... Our so software, software running software. on their hardware. Right, okay. So what you do is you... We create a 3D map of where are the products so that they can know for real, like here, here is the layout of our store, actually. So then when they connect the sales data, they can see for the first time, oh, now I see. Most of our customers are buying things here, but they are not buying things here. Let's see what happens if we move some of our popular products to a, a part of the shelf that is not getting so much traffic. 
Will this increase basket size or decrease basket size? Now they can start experimenting with product placement. And this is important because e-commerce has been growing 300% faster than retail for the last one or two decades. And a big reason why is that they can use algorithms, right, to recommend the right product. But retail cannot do that today. They have a very hard time doing A-B testing on product placement. But we essentially make it possible for them to start running experiments and measure the result. What happens if we put the Coca-Cola next to the popcorn? Will we sell more popcorn? So um, tell us uh, how, what role does AI play then? Is it more on the analytics side or the creation of the 3D maps, obviously? Uh, the creation of the 3D map uh, uses AI heavily, but also Kind of our philosophy is that we want to make the physical world accessible to AI. Mm. So the physical world includes things like how did I actually place my products? So once you've captured where the products actually are, now you can start asking AI, hey, do you have any recommendations on how I could change this? Do you see any interesting patterns uh, in, in the sales? So uh, one of our partners in our ecosystem is a, a Swedish-American AI company called Accurate. And... Uh, they use AI to look at the sales data and now also integrating the spatial data that they're getting from us so that the AI can start finding patterns like, oh, actually, did you know that when you move this kind of product, the following things happen? Right. And of course, uh, these uh, information images videos are stored on the client's uh, databases right. and not. Yeah. Okay. So when it comes to decentralized uh, visual positioning, for example, like, you know, the decentralized version of, say, end users like myself, uh, what are the uh, sort of applications that you see? Well, if you want to use augmented reality in your home to leave notes or something like this, like leave a note for your husband, this plant needs to get watered on Thursdays and Tuesdays, uh, things like this, AR notes is a very powerful feature, but maybe you don't want to create a, a 3D scan of your home and give it to Google, right? So uh, the use case of being able to do decentralized spatial computing is that you can keep this data to yourself and still be able to use things like robots and augmented reality uh, without giving that data to some big corporation. Yeah. Oh, right. okay. We have uh, an application called McKenna uh, that people can use in their home to leave AI notes and AR decorations uh, can even put, you know, virtual 3D sculptures, things like this in your home so you can show your guests. Um, it, it's a cute application. Yeah. All right. Can you describe, you know, one example how we, we can use it? So uh, first what? you create the digital twin of your home. All right. So you, I go around yeah, you taking videos of... Film the video. You choose where you want to host this. So we recommend you host it yourself, but you could also, you know, host it on the cloud or, or wherever you like, right? We have no... Uh, restriction on where you host this data, but we make it possible for you to run it on your Mac Mini at home, for example. All right, okay. And now that you've done this, you could use McKenna uh, to, for example, leaving reminders for yourself in, in space. Oh, uh, really cool. uh, one of the first examples I did actually was with, uh, with my brother. I uh, hid the key to uh, a place he needed to go to uh, in a book in the bookshelf, and I left an AR note to help him find exactly the book. Right, so there were over a thousand books there, right? And it's like, oh, I, I, I hid it in a book, and he could just go, oh, here it is. Oh, right, okay. Um, so another question I have is, uh, you also offer crypto as a payment rail to further, I guess, uh, decentralize the um, your service offering. Is that the that, reason? That's not quite right. Okay. Uh, the underlying protocol that allows the devices to exchange data with each other. Uh, we wanted to make it possible for the devices to get compensated for contributing data. Mm. So if, if you are this conference center, for example, and some third party application, like some tourism guide or something like this, wants to be able to use the digital twin of this and put information in here, then uh, we wanted it to be possible for this venue to be able to charge a little bit of money uh, to uh, provide that data, but also actually be able to pay uh, for the visiting devices to contribute new data, right? Because maybe, you know, this venue does not have cameras everywhere and they want to know, did anything change? So the AI can see like, well, you know, if anyone is using the AR and the camera is pointing in a part of the venue that we have not seen in a long time, want to be able to buy that data so we can fix our map. So uh, it's a perhaps a little bit futuristic use case to some, but I think this is really not far away. 
uh, where AIs, robots, drones are going to want to be able to buy spatial computing resources from each other, uh, both data and compute resources. Right, so talking about data, right, if we contribute, individually contribute, what is the quality assurance? Like, I'm not contributing something that is old or, you know, uh, not relevant. So the way it works is if you are willing to provide data, then the prerequisite is that you start sharing your real-time location with the venue. You start sharing your real-time location with the venue. So now the venue knows precisely where you are, and the venue's AI can then make a decision based on where you are, do I want to buy this data or not? So you cannot come with old data and buy it. It's only if you're there right now. So the responsibility is on the venue um, data host to ensure the data quality. Right, okay, got it. So at your presentation, you mentioned this work called DPIN, Decentralized Physical Infrastructure, and visual, decentralized visual positioning is yeah. one of that. Can you maybe share with our audience who are new to this terminology, what other you know, building blocks go under DPIN? One of my favorite DPIN projects is a company called GeodeNet. Uh, with offices in Santa Clara and Shanghai. Uh, they make it possible for people to buy RTK extenders. RTK stands for real-time kinematics. It's a way uh, to improve the positioning quality of the GPS. So let's say, for example, that you are a farmer and you have a tractor with some AI in it, and this tractor needs to be able to keep track of the precise position of the different plants in the field, right? You cannot use GPS for this because it's not precise enough, but RTK uh, has the accuracy of about three centimeters, so RTK is popular enough. The problem is that RTK needs base stations uh, on Earth to connect to, so what GeodeNet does is they allow people to buy these base stations and put on their roof, for example. And if any robot or AI connects to that uh, device to get better positioning, they earn some rewards. This is decentralized physical infrastructure. The physical infrastructure are these RTK antennas, right? And uh, it would be very difficult for some company to go choose where should these antennas go and. Uh, big investment, etc. But by decentralizing this, consumers can choose, hmm, do I have a good position to make an RTK antenna? Actually, yeah, there's a lot of drones flying here, a lot of farms around here. I will buy this thing, I will put it on my roof, and I will take the calculated decision to see whether or not I will get an ROI on this. And this is what I mean with civilization scale infrastructure that is funded, owned, and operated by the people. GeodeNet has 13,000 of these RTK antennas now deployed by people like you and me. So it's the, it's the most extensive RTK network in the world, and it was not centrally planned. It was just people like you and me that thought like, oh, this is nice. I will buy one of these antennas. Uh, and put on my roof and I will start earning some passive income if my, art, if my antenna is being used. Very interesting. It's uh, quite eye-opening, this conversation for me. Um, so my last question then, uh, you know, coming to Super AI, right? Um, and I saw, you know, one of the videos that you made uh, about Hong Kong FinTech Festival. Was that last year or something? That was two years ago. Oh, two years ago, yeah. right? Um, where you demonstrated how, you know, uh, you guys are using that technology at the exhibition floor. What changes do you anticipate, you know, if you do come back to Super AI? Like uh, Next year when we are back, we will have a robot here that can give you guidance. So you'll be able to ask a robot, how do I find the bathroom? And it will take you to the bathroom. That's, that's our big plan for next year. Oh, really? Okay. Can I, can I mention this? Sure. All right, cool. Okay, something to look forward to. So thank you so much, Niels, for thank your you, time. Jane. To, thank you.